Hey guys, Todd here. Today I'm going to show you how to replace a malfunctioning spring reel inside a roll and lock retractable truck bed cover. The tools I'll be using are a quarter inch Allen wrench for the clamps on the ram that I'm working on. For the spring reel replacement, I'll be using a number two Phillips head screwdriver, a long 3 16 Allen wrench. We recommend at least eight inches long on that. A pair of thin open end 11 16 wrenches and a drill with a 3 16 drill bit and a number two Phillips head bit. Now make sure you're subscribed to our channel to stay up to date with all our latest content. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, now we're gonna show you how to install the replacement spring in a roll and lock cover. Now this particular cover is operational. The spring has spring tension on it still. So I'll be doing some things a little bit different. I'll call those out. Number one, if your spring, it has no spring tension, then when you unlock the cover, it's not gonna automatically roll forward. So you will have to kind of force it forward into the canister. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this and open it up. We need to have it open so we can access our clamps and remove the clamps. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and use a quarter inch Allen wrench to drop each one of these clamps. Some applications require different size uh, tools to do that. So whatever it takes to remove your, your clamps, use that. All right, now when I bring this down, I want to call out this is a brand new cover. So this is coming out nice and easy for me. But keep in mind, this is a stainless steel screw and this is an aluminum block. So if this has been on there for an extended period of time, it might be a little bit seized up in there uh, because of electrolysis. Uh, so if it is, a lot of times it's, uh, and it's wanting to, to not come out, a lot of times it's good to tighten it up a little bit and then loosen it back up. Sometimes they come out a little easier that way. Just gonna set the hardware down at the bottom and move on. All right, now I've got these down. I go ahead and repeat the same process for the opposite side. All right, now that I've got all the clamps removed, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the rail out a little bit and pitch it up. Now, what you're gonna see on the inside, you're gonna have a couple of Phillips head screws that need to come out. Now, if you do not see the Phillips head screws there, you've got an older style rail. This is the most recent style rail. Um, if there are no Phillips head screws along here, then you want to pull a screw from the bottom of the end cap and pull it out. But look at your printed instructions. That can, that's going to spell all that out for you. Uh, so this is the newer style. We're going to go ahead and remove the two Phillips head screws. All right, now with both of those screws out, what I'm going to do is kind of push on the inside here and pop this out, set that off to the side. That's actually held on a little bit a lot of times with some adhesive right there. So just make sure that's pulled free from the end cap and that'll pull right out. Then once that's gone, you'll see right here, there is a Phillips head screw. That Phillips head screw needs to come out as well. All right. Now I'm gonna slide this end cap out. Here's the hole that went through, and it went through the, the hole in the gasket right here. That actually is what holds the gasket in place to keep it from coming loose. All right, now on both sides, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and put our clamp back together, just finger tight. We don't need to tighten it all the way down. All right, make sure that's done on both sides. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the canister cover. Uh, what we're gonna do is locate the screws on the side of the canister cover and those come out. I've already removed the, uh, the screw on the opposite side. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one out with a Phillips head screwdriver. Then the cover slides forward and lifts off. We're gonna set that to the side. All right, now let's go ahead and bring this back. This portion of the cover right here is called the handle. Uh, so this handle rail needs to extend past the end of our side rails. Uh, when we do that, what that's gonna do is that's going to allow us uh, to have the edge of the cover where it attaches to the reel face upward. Uh, so next, what I need to go ahead and do is we're going to drill out uh, all of these rivets. I've got five of them across here. Uh, now, 
on newer models, brand new models, these are actually being converted over to uh, self-tapping screws, uh, the ones that we're gonna be replacing uh, this with. So you might just have to use a Phillips head screwdriver to pull these out rather than drill these out. But I've got rivets, so we're gonna use a 3 16 drill bit and drill all five of these out. All right, now that we've removed all the rivets uh, that hold the cover to the reel, obviously mine still has spring tension, so it undid itself. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull back on the cover just a little bit uh, so we can free up that reel and remove it from the canister. And what we're gonna do is go ahead to the end of the reel. We're gonna see we've got an Allen head bolt that needs to come out. Make sure you have a nice extra long 3 16 Allen wrench. And we can put that in there and then unscrew it. We're gonna set that to the side. That's gonna free up the reel so that we can then slide it out. We're gonna raise it up and slide it out of the canister and set it off to the side. Okay, so now I went ahead and cleaned out any kind of metal shavings that were inside the canister. It's very important to do before you go any further because you don't want anything getting caught in between the cover and itself because that could cause some damage to the cover. So that's all cleaned out. Now I want to point out, uh, this is our new spring reel. On this side right here, this is the stem that goes on the passenger side that's going to slide right into this area. Um, I've got a little X mark that I went ahead and put on that portion of the stem, and we're gonna show you why we're doing that in a little bit. Um, on this portion over here, this is the driver's side portion. You'll notice we've got a hole that's gonna slide right into the peg that's on the uh, driver's side. So we're gonna go ahead and line this up over here. Once that's inserted into the peg, we're gonna go ahead and line up our stem and drop it in place. And next we can go ahead and take our bolt, go back through the stem. All right, now that I've got the bolt temporarily back in place, what we need to do is pull the cover back over top of the reel. We wanna make sure that these holes that are already in the cover line up straight across the reel. We also wanna make sure the edges of the cover are lined up perfectly on the sides where it's nice and centered. So I'm gonna get everything all centered and then we can start uh, drilling the uh, the cover back into the rail to attach it. All right, now these are provided self-tapping screws. We're gonna use a Phillips head screwdriver to put those in there. If we do get any metal shavings down the canister, make sure you clean those up as we go. All right, so for this next step, what we're gonna need is two open-end 11 16 wrenches. Now, I wanna show you what you wanna look for. All right, so I've got three wrenches right here and they're all different widths. If we have two that are just over a quarter inch thick, it's not gonna work. They're not gonna both be able to go on to uh, the, the shaft. So we're not gonna use this. Uh, this one right here is a thinner wrench. It's closer to about 3 16 and then you've got thin wrenches. Thin wrenches are actually perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these two together. Um, and the way we're gonna rotate this to put spring tension on is first we have to pull out that Allen screw using our 3 16 Allen wrench. Now what we wanna do is use our wrenches to rotate this. We're gonna make sure that X rotates all the way around 14 times. 
Uh, so we're just gonna have to walk it one step at a time all the way through uh, using our inches. So we're just gonna start rotating. One, and we're gonna get it to 14. And 14. So what I'm gonna do is hold this wrench in place. This is gonna allow me to hold that, the hole open so that the bolt can go back through. I wiggle it back and forth where it makes connection all the way through. And then we can go ahead and snug that down using our long 3 16 Allen wrench. All right, now we got our spring tension. Let's go ahead and bring in our canister cover and reinstall that. peg on the inside of the canister cover with this slot right here. And it's going to slide back, expose the hole, and get our screw started. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and let the cover retract back into the canister. Next, we can go ahead and reattach our end cap. So let's go ahead and take loose those uh, clamps and lift up the rail. All right, and we only had those clamps on finger tight, so we're pulling that back apart. So we can lift this back up. Those end caps are going to go back on exactly the same way they came off, just in reverse order. So go ahead and line everything up, slide that in place. Make sure that your gasket uh, is pulled all the way back to the end cap, and then we can go ahead and insert our screw. All right, once that's in place, we're gonna go ahead and take our stopper plate and put that back in place and reinstall uh, the Phillips head screws on the side of that. All right, repeat the same process on the opposite side and we can go ahead and reattach our rails. Well, that concludes the procedure. If you found this video helpful, make sure and give us a thumbs up. If you want to know more about the product, check the link in the description below. And as always, if you have any questions, call the experts or visit us online at realtruck.com.